Hello, my name is Tony Chan from Telecom TV. I'm here at the OpenStack Summit in uh, Sydney, Australia for 2017. With me today is Gabrielle Di Pietta from VMware. Gabrielle? Hi, Tony. Uh, one of the hottest trends these days is uh, multi-access edge computing. And I understand that VMware has come up with a pretty robust solution in this area. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. You know, uh, multi-axis edge computing, both on uh, fixed or mobile. So mobile edge computing, I think it's, a, as you said, is the hottest trend, uh, driven by actually the next wave of uh, you know, network rollout, network virtualization, both in fixed and mobile. Um, as says VMware, we take to market a solution uh, which actually has a very stable platform for virtualizing uh, network workloads across our, you know, uh, compute, storage, and network. And effectively, we have uh, built uh, um, you know, a solution that actually uh, showcases the ability to actually deploy uh, um, edge computing in a virtualized fashion uh, through a centralized management and orchestration, uh, but then with an ad hoc deployment on distributed or uh, data centers or mini data centers uh, at the edge. Um, I think the um, underlying technology is very important. The, you know, the cloud technologies is actually the underpinning of a very stable Mac solution. Um, also, the management and orchestration uh, is essential for um, the actual success of actually deploying services uh, into the edge. Uh, so ha have you identified any use cases that is that you can show us? As a matter of fact, you have multiple use cases in the demonstration that we're showing. Uh, for example, from uh, fixed line uh, uh, CPE or SD1 technologies, uh, we're looking at uh, edge uh, firewalls and security. We're looking at media uh, uh, transcoding and encoding uh, analytics, and actually a very interesting solution as well on a connected car. Uh, where we effectively move in the whole uh, um, data plane all the way to the edge, so the packet core to the edge, to supply a variety of um, communication and entertainment services to connected cars. Um, so you can see across the different demonstration that uh, this is not uh, um, something built on separate clouds or separate environments, but actually a common uh, infrastructure orchestrated and with a common networking layer and a common compute layer that can really dynamically adapt and actually move uh, um, based on the use case. What is also interesting is the assurance aspect. Uh, uh, analytics uh, and uh, the ability to understand fault performance uh, are key to ensure the, again, uh, the service. And you will see in the demonstration as well all the data collection in the troubleshooting and remediation about it. Are these solutions already on the market or is it more still on in the beta testing and trialing stage? Uh, no, all the technologies are actually commercial technologies. Uh, uh, obviously the market is picking up, you know, because network crawlout uh, traditionally started from uh, core network and centralized data centers. But we are already, uh, um, you know, in the market with uh, different carriers. Um, is yes, they're already rolling out some of the initial services in, uh, in, uh, in Edge. Whether it's mobile Edge or it's multi-access Edge on, uh, on fixed network, uh, especially looking at enterprise customers as well. Uh, I also think that there's a very interesting dynamic in how carriers can leverage multi-access Edge in combination with distributed cloud. So not necessarily just for network functions, but also to generate additional top line revenue from, uh, let's say, applications and services that can actually deliver closer to the edge, driven by uh, you know, the requirements of some of these applications. If you look at latency uh, or low latency, right, in, uh, let's say, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, media in general, uh, or analytics, uh, which needs to be collected on the edge, as an example. So Many of the services you talked about are really next generation services, things like connected car, obviously, uh, and even the media delivery, the, the on-site transcoding. 
I mean, those, those seem like next generation services in the market, but you're saying that they're already available? Like, are people do, actually doing it already? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I think um, many carriers that already roll out some of these services using 4G LT technologies. Now they're actually pushing the boundaries on 4G and, and they're all uh, looking forward in the next wave of uh, acceleration. Uh, at the same time, the uh, dynamic of actually um, uh, implementing distributed cloud, it's already happening in, uh, um, in a typical fixed line carrier where they might use some of the real estate on the edge to actually host uh, uh, workloads in and uh, providing a set of services uh, to their enterprise customers. One of the big technologies coming up, transitions coming up is 5G obviously. Uh, how is this going to fit into 5G? Uh, I would say 5G is probably one of the major drivers of uh, network transformation in general uh, and the way application will be delivered. Of course, there will be some uh, network topology transformation in the 5G standards which are still being formed in many cases. But I would say the ability to provide slices or network slices uh, uh, in, a, in a very um, dynamic way uh, guaranteeing quality of services and, and service level agreements, uh, I would say will transform a set of services. This will absolutely require uh, a softer defined uh, network technology. Uh, and so this will effectively transform the way telcos will not just deploy network, but the way they're thinking their services, the way they will build the uh, provisioning and deployment engine, and also the way they will eventually uh, um, design their uh, charging and policy strategies in, uh, in, uh, from a pricing perspective, from an offering perspective. Okay, so for um, an operator who is looking at multi-access edge computing, what are some of the challenges and, and complexities that they're facing today? Well, I think there are challenges on the technology side, there are challenges on the uh, operational side and uh, in operation transformation in general. Uh, some technologies are uh, not mature completely, some technologies are coming to maturity, some standards are not set yet. Um, most likely there's been a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, history in deploying um, centralized uh, um, cloud and centralized data centers. And so some of this application is, uh, uh, you know, pioneering some of the new uh, um, you know, technologies and functionalities. But I would say the technology is there, as VMware, you know, we had 15 plus years in cloud technology build out. Uh, I would say very important is to look at the uh, management, uh, operations and orchestration, which will effectively build the automation aspect in, uh, in edge computing. So. Is there anything else that we need to know about Mac? Uh, well, I would say that um, I also think this would be probably the wave one, the first wave of deploying Mac. I can see how uh, in the future, we will evolve towards a much more granular uh, uh, world of you know, application placement based on uh, real-time analytics, um, on um, understanding the uh, profile of the applications that needs to be deployed, and the ability to potentially uh, extend the um, quality and service assurance measurement all the way to the device, whether the device is a fixed or mobile device. So, uh, I would say this will be a, a, an industry and a deployment in a, in a, which will last for probably for the next uh, five years. Right. Okay. Uh, last question is, you, you have a demonstration at the VMA booth. What should people be looking out for? Uh, well, if you are go to the VMware booth, uh, we actually have a, a NFV demo portal where we have uh, collected all of our use cases based on our vCloud NFV platform and you will actually find a specific demonstration for uh, uh, multi-access edge computing or Mac. You will find demonstrations for IoT connected cars. You can find demonstrations on active assurance and all of the other use cases, for example, uh, fixed and mobile use cases between EPC, IMS, uh, VCP, SD1. So we have a very wide range of demonstration, pretty much in line to our strategy, which is to be a multi services, a multi-VNF uh, uh, enablement player. Okay. Uh, what's next for VMware? Um, understand it, it won't stop with the current solution set, so uh, are you looking to evolve that 
uh, further? Yeah, we're always innovating. Uh, we have a full roadmap charted for the next two and a half, three years already. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of talks this day around cloud native and containers. We are incorporating all these technologies in our NFE stack. Um, a lot of evolution in the world of operations intelligence, operations management. Uh, so you will see many more things coming up from, from the VR side in this market. Great. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Thank you.